This tutorial shows you how to make a file for use with the population genetic software structure, which is used for Bayesian cluster analysis. This tutorial is designed for starting with a file in FASTA format. This tutorial assumes you are using Ubuntu Linux version 20.04 as your operating system. If you do not have Linux, you can emulate it on your Windows or Mac computer for free. See the show notes for details. In fact, I am emulating Linux right now on my Mac computer using VirtualBox. In fact, I have a VirtualBox virtual machine pre-configured with the software I will show you today, as well as other population genetics and ecological niche modeling software. See the show notes below for step-by-step -step instructions to download and hook up this virtual machine within your Windows or Mac computer. This tutorial assumes you have RStudio installed on your machine. RStudio also requires that R be installed. Or you can just use the pre-configured virtual machine I referenced earlier. The first step is to open a web browser and visit my website joshbanta.com. Click on the link for tutorials. and scroll down until you see how to make a structure file from a FASTA file. Click on the link that says Files Needed for Tutorial. Click the Download button and select Direct Download from the drop-down menu. Once the download is complete, you can close the browser window. Open up File Explorer. You may have it pinned to your favorites if you're using my virtual machine, or you can search for it down below. Navigate to your Downloads folder and double-click the file that we just downloaded. The file we just downloaded is in a compressed format that makes it faster for downloading, but we have to uncompress the folder, in other words, unarchive the folder in order to be able to use it. Click on File Explorer and navigate back to your desktop. Now, with the file extraction software open, drag the folder called Sample Data into your File Explorer window on the desktop. You can now close the Archive Manager software, the extraction software. You have now successfully extracted the folder with the data to your desktop so that it is ready for use. Next, let's take a quick look at the file we're going to be converting. Double-click on the Sample Data folder, either from your desktop itself or from the, the folder within your File Explorer. Double-click on the file SampleData.FAS. This is the file we will be converting to structure format. If you are using this tutorial on your own data, your file will not be called SampleData.FAS. It'll be called whatever it is that you named it. Next to each one of these carrots is the name of each individual organism. In other words, each individual sample. So this is one individual, this is another individual, and so on. Below each individual is their DNA sequence. This is FASTA format, very common file format in population genetics. Open up RStudio. You may have it pinned to favorites if you're using my virtual machine, or you can search for it below. Click on File, Open File. Click on your desktop, double click on Sample Data. You need to remember there is difference between running this script if you have diploid data or haploid data. Know your organism. Did the DNA come from a diploid organism or a haploid organism? For this tutorial, the DNA came from a diploid organism. But with your own data, you would 
if you had haploid uh, DNA, you would want to use the other script, FASTA to structure haploid. Otherwise, the, strep the steps will be identical. So click on FASTA to structure diploid and click open. This tutorial assumes you already have the package APE installed within RStudio. If you did not, you would want to highlight line 3 not, except for the hash mark and click Run. But even though we do have APE installed on this machine, we need to call the APE library so that the functions within the APE library are available for RStudio to use. Highlight line 5 and click Run. Notice here, you see the name of the file that we will be converting, sampledata.fas. If you're using your own data, you'll need to type in the name of your data file here instead. And here. Capitalization does matter. The capitalization or lack thereof in the name that you write here has to match the capitalization or lack thereof in the file name that you've named your own file but we'll be using the sample data from the tutorial so we can leave it as is. We need to highlight lines 10 all the way through line 176. You can do that using your mouse in the normal way, or you can start by putting the cursor at the beginning of line 10, use the scroll bar on the right to go all the way down to line 176, press the shift button and then click to highlight lines 10 through 176. With those highlighted, press run. I actually made a mistake, but rather than edit it out, I'm going to keep it in here as a very good teachable moment. Looking down here in the console window, we can see what has been happening while R has been running. Notice all the words error, not found, error, not found. If we scroll up, we can see that as it was running, it was finding more and more errors. Error, error, error. What is going on? We forgot to do something. I forgot to do something. Think for a moment to see if you can figure out what it is that I forgot. I forgot to set the working directory. The working directory is the folder where RStudio goes to find the files as well as to write files when it's finished. Always set the working directory before you start running any of your script in R. Session. Set working directory. Choose directory. Navigate to the desktop and select the folder where we have our data, that folder called sample data, and click open. Now, with the working directory set, we will run lines 10 through 176 once again. All those error messages are now gone. The conversion has been successful. To see what the converted file looks like, click on File Explorer. The file is called output.prn. PRN is the format for structure. Double click on it to take a look at it in Text Editor. It's an unusual looking format but it's all there. There's our individuals, and this is the DNA sequence data written in a numeric format. Two more items to note. Every time you run this R script to convert a FASTA file to a structure file, the output will always be called output.prn. This means that if you're converting multiple FASTA files to structure files, every time you do it, your last output file for structure will be overridden. Your last output file for structure will be erased, and the new one will be put in its place. 
So if you don't want to lose your old one, you need to rename it. The way to do that, if you're on a Windows machine, is to right click with your mouse. If you're on a Mac laptop with two fingers push down on your trackbar. Scroll down in the drop down menu to rename. And rename your file something else. You could name it output1.prn, for instance. Now it is safe from being overridden the next time you run this R script on a different FASTA file. The other point I want to make, you should do the same for this file here called structure underscore info. So right click if you're on Windows or if you're on a Mac laptop, push down on the trackpad with two fingers, go down to rename from the drop down menu, and we'll call it structure info one. What is the structure info file? That's my point number two. Let me double click on it so that I can show you. When you come to this screen, click OK. This file shows you the number of loci. Loci means the number of positions in the DNA code for each individual. The number of individuals in our data set is 77. These two pieces of information are important when running structure. You will not be able to load the file that you created into structure unless you're, you have this information available. So keep this open or write down this information because structure will, will ask you for it before it allows you to import your data file.